There's numerous console style and channel strip plugins out there. Is there room for another one? One that doesn't try to emulate any one specific piece of hardware, but it can deliver vintage sound or clean sound depending on what you're going for. And that's what the Lifeline console plugin is all about. So let's quickly try it out on a drum bus, dial in some settings, and then we'll go over some of the details and give it some more listens in just a bit. So that sounded really nice and you have a good selection of modern cleans and some vintage sounds in there. This thing can achieve a lot of different sounds. So it's pretty versatile and you can see there's a lot of presets. There's over 300 presets in here and they're all organized very nicely. You have bass, bus, creative, drums, guitar, and so on. Lots of different options in there if you want to use presets to help you get started with this plugin. But it is really easy to dial in. It has a nice clean user interface. As you can see here, you have your five modules here. Plus you have your global controls over in this section here. And you can see this cool triangle feature where you can dial in as much clean or vintage or dry sound that you want in there and you have your main input and outputs plus this warm and shine knob here. Now let's just play around with this triangle thing for a minute. So that's kind of neat. You can really dial in the sound you want. You're not stuck with just vintage or just clean. You can dial it in however you want. Now you have these warm and shine knobs down here. The warm knob enhances the low frequencies. So if you use this on like your mix bus, it can help to glue all of your low frequencies together so you can have a nice cleaner mix. And the shine focuses on a high end sparkle to give your tracks a little more of a polished sound. So let's play around with this a bit on our mix bus. I really like what that warm does. It kind of brings all of those low frequencies together and glues them like it says it's going to do and just makes the mix sound a little more polished with both these warm and shine settings. The shine can go a little over the top and make your mix sound a little brittle. So you want to be careful with how much of that you add there. But both of these are really nice little controls to have on here. Now let's check out the five modules that you get in here. And before we dig into each one, I just want to show you on each of these modules, you have a main and advanced control right here. So you click that and it's going to bring up your more advanced controls and then you can close that down. Also in here, you'll notice that we have mid side and left and right controls, or you can have it on mono and stereo, that sort of thing. And all of these modules have that same control in them. Also to note, you can turn each of these modules on and off by clicking on the little button in the corner like that. So you don't have to have them all on all the time. You can have one on or four or three, whatever amount you want in whatever configuration you want. And there's also a blend knob on each of them as well. And another quick thing to note about these modules is you can move them around wherever you want in your mix. Now let's look at the preamp module and this can add some subtle harmonic saturation to your signal to kind of enhance the sound. So let's give the preamp a listen right now and I have everything else turned off. We're just going to listen to the preamp.
Another thing you notice is if you click on this part of the module, we have some options. So with this one, we have bright, warm, or dark, and they do make a significant difference to the sound. So depending on what instrument you're using, you'll want to play around with what one of those sounds best. So the preamp sounded really nice on our bass guitar here. Now let's move on to the next thing, which is our EQ. And you can see this EQ has four different controls. So we have low, low mids, and then high mids and highs. So I'm just going to play it back and we'll change some of these settings, see what we can come up with here. So the EQ is extremely easy to use. It sounds good. And the different models we have here are gain, vintage, and dirty. Let's just try dirty for a second. I think I like that vintage one best on this bass guitar anyway. So now let's move on to our compressor and you can see before we move on here, we have analog, which can add some nice hardware character to it. Then we have transparent for a nice modern clean sound. Then you have variable, which can be great to use on buses or on your mix as it can kind of glue things together. So I'm going to start with analog because I like analog compressors on my bases. And let's just start to dial it in with the simple settings here first. So this is a great sounding compressor. You can hear the differences between the analog transparent and variable, and it's easy to dial in and it sounds great. So let's move on to our next module here, which is where, and for the where setting, I'm going to put it on our mix bus here, and this can kind of give us more of an analog sound. You can see we have the sounds of tape, vinyl, or cassette. So whatever we want there, we can switch that. And then we have noise where we can bring in amp sounds, hum, mechanical sounds, and dust. And you can add how much of that noise you want to introduce. And then down here, you can choose how you want that introduced. So you can have constant, duct, dynamic, or triggered, and you can control that there. And then there's also an age setting where we can choose how much of the degradation we want on our track. So let's just play around with this a bit now.
All right, you can see how you could have some fun with that. You could use it for lo-fi sounds, definitely, but if you dial it in just slightly, you can use it to add some nice tape saturation on there if that's what you're going for. And now let's check out this modulation module here. And again, we have tape, vinyl, or cassette, and this can add subtle pitch variations, which is similar to what you would find in recording to old tape or vinyl or cassette tapes, those little pitch variations, which kind of adjust how things sound. So let's just test this out, hear what we've got here. So you can hear, you can get crazy with this or you can use it just subtly. So it can be used as a creative effect or you can use it just to add that little bit of analog saturation to the final mix or the final part of whatever track it is you're working on. So is there room for another console or channel strip type of plugin? Well, I think when it comes to Lifeline's console plugin, there definitely is because you can use this all over your mix on individual tracks, on your mix buzz, use it for mastering if you want to. It's an excellent little plugin. Now I know it's available on Mac or Windows, but I don't know the pricing as of the recording of this because Plugin Boutique did send me this ahead of time to check out and they didn't have the pricing yet, but I'll link to it down in the description so you can head over there and check it out for yourself. Now check out six excellent free VST plugins, including one of the best free delay plugins by clicking the video on the screen. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching for Audio Tech TV. I'm Zane, keep creating, and we'll talk soon.